Right, we're back for another What We Doing This Week. Uh, I've, be, I've actually been busy doing a load of other stuff this week. Uh, what have I been doing this week? I've been, we've got a customer car in there. Um, I've been sorting out the, the, it's the same Nismo brakes on that as I did for mine. Uh, and a really special rear brake setup that we've, we've had to go with. So that has been finalized and it's been bled, which is quite cool because it means that my, my funky brakes that I've made for a, for a couple of sets um, are now working and they got fluid in so obviously we need to do a load of hot testing and track work but that'll come I mean stage one passed right I've been pretty busy with that pretty busy with a few other things now uh, I have been to the other machine shop visiting a couple of times where the wheel nuts uh, were going on to the end of the hut it just wasn't wasn't going quite right so I had to kind of remodel and reprofile that and now uh, it's straight on, so they're really cracking on with the rest of the set. And I reckon today or tomorrow I'm going to be able to pick up the first single one to do these hub jigs. Now, what are the hubs? So that, that isn't a hub. The hub is the, is the, the spinny, in my language, the, the hub is the spinny bit that your wheel goes on. That's what's getting machined elsewhere because I, I haven't got a big lathe, just to recap on that. But I am doing all of the milling. So that's what we were doing in the last episode, right? We were doing these. It's all very well wanting to mill something, but you need to hold it. So we were doing that, and in this one, uh, I think a good, good snippet is to try and finish those off. Right, so this was the longer one, and I was gonna use this for, for one operation, from, for one side of the hub. And then the shorter one is there, and I was going to use that for the other side of the hub. It's going to do things like hold it from underneath with either the lock nut or the wheel nut, and then mill from the top. And I started looking at the CAD, and I thought maybe that's maybe that's not the best way to do it, or maybe it's not the best way to exclusively do it. There might be a better way. And then I also figured that I might be able to do all of it just on here. So maybe let me dive into the CAD software and I'll show you what the whole kind of setup looks like in there. And then if we're all in agreement and everyone's all right with it, we'll just use the big one and start doing a load of milling. Oh, welcome to the CAD domain. Right, you'll have to uh, bear with me because it's not my normal mouse. You don't care if it's my normal mouse or not. So this is the hub in the machine and don't worry about that GPU. Uh, this is the hub in the machine and as I was saying just before in the workshop uh, I did originally have two separate bodies that was going to do the different side but it's a lot of metal and it would be a lot of time to machine both of them so I did have a think and thought mm, maybe I can actually do it in a wanna so if we go back into design I can show you what the plan is going to be. So instead of this top one we're just doing the bottom one and that will be op one so it will go in that way and i thought originally it was going to have this space in the bottom and i was going to be able to put one of the nuts on do it right up but then every time i'd have to take it in and out i'd have to take the whole thing out so i thought maybe this isn't the best way to do it so what we're going to do for the first op is have a clamping spacer so it's going to have this over the top and then that over the top of that so the the plate in the middle uh, there's going to be a gap with a shim that can go in and the plate on the top is going to bolt round with these however many it is 6 or 12 M12 bolts that will clamp it down and hold it in position and that means that I can then go ahead and do all these kind of drilling and tapping on the front. I'll be able to flip it over. Uh, this face will be flat against there. This 65mm surface, so it'll sit in the same bit there uh, and be kept concentric. And once it's flipped over, I'm going to be able to make some bolts that will go into these threads that I've put in. So everything has been, I've tried to think about everything. Uh, I've got kind of clearance clearance amounts so I can put my tap through this and I can put it through enough that I'm going to get a full thread on there blah 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 um, but yeah basically it means I can just use this one work holding piece for both. I'll show you a few bits of how I'm going to make it. 
Uh, op 1 is all the stuff that I was doing in the last video, so that was basically just putting the pegs on to go into the zero point. So op two is cool. This is an interesting video, isn't it? Sorry, guys. I mean, if you're still here, fair play. Uh, op two, uh, yeah, going to go in do a few different bores because this hasn't got a. Uh, this has only got a short kind of uh, shoulder on the flute. So if you go all the way down, it starts rubbing against this top bit. So going to do a, a big initial bore. Bah, go straight in there, all the way down. Do the chamfery bit on the top. And then effectively, it's a load of clean up operations before. I start spot drilling and tapping and doing all that stuff. Um, I will go through, I'll make changes, I'll try and get the finish as good as I can. But yeah, that's the cam, so should we go back in real life? We'll go back in real life and you can look at me there for a bit. Just a bit of a tool flex, don't mind me. See, this is the big puppy that we talked about on the CAD software. There you go, so that's in, and I've put the inserts in that are supposed to be better for steel, although mm, I'm yet, yet to find the actual settings that would complement that statement, Colroy. But there we go. I'm going to whip it out, and I'm going to zero this. So my datum is right in the middle of the other side, but I'm not going to do that with it in. I think I milled that one second. And the outside of it is really rough as well. So I can't be 100% with where the centre is on that. So what I'm going to do instead is find the exact centre of this plate by checking against front, back, side to side, who fifth axis have reliably informed me uh, will be correct. The, the main reason for that is that the whole jig will go in there to have some holes drilled around the perimeter. So I'd like it to rotate around the centre, otherwise it's just a bit of a pain in the arse to write the cam for it. So, uh, yes, it's all a bit CAD, CAD cam CNC heavy at the moment, isn't it? But I've got a lot of stuff to do here. So, uh, there'll be other stuff in the future. I'll, I'll learn how to weld again. Big boy's in. I, uh, yeah, I zeroed off there, like I said. I double checked it against two of the pinholes as well, and it's within what is it within? Like six microns, which is probably it's more than I can machine or measure to, I reckon, on this on this girl. So that's this it's as good as it's gonna get, it's pretty good. Um yeah, it, we're all in, ready to go. Although I've got all of those operations in the cam, uh, I haven't done any boring with this long tool in steel. Well I've only used it in alley, so I'm just gonna just gonna run the program step by step. Uh, see what the feeds and speeds are like. I'll uh, I'll press run, and then what I'll do is I'll once I've once I've bored through it, and maybe maybe done the face. I'll I'll show you how it's looking. Not too bad for something sticking out that far in a has. Uh, it's never going to be a mega surface finish, but this one's actually okay. The roughing ones are roughing ones. I'm going to go down, and then, as per the program, I'll drop onto a, I'll drop onto a smaller tool to do the important surface here and the facing stuff. And then it's it's good, it's good. We're all good. It's the bore done. See, promise. Um, I'm just going to run the adaptive stuff to bring the top down now. Then I'm actually going to finish it with this little 10 mil carbide. Because uh, the smaller the bit, the better finish I'll, I'll get on an area like that, really, on this machine. Um, oh yeah, for a laugh as well, I'm, I'm going to do the chamfer with the 16 as a finish, just to see if the smaller size gives a better finish. Who knows? Time for holes. So I've got a load of holes to put in here for um, a jig plate, the jig plate that's going to go on top and clamp it down, 
uh, and then clearance holes so when I'm drilling the flange it, it clears the other side and I'm not drilling the jig and then I need to tackle with them so because I tend to use um, slots eight and nine for a drill and a tap that's on the cycle um, and that's what's in the cam since this is just one piece I'm just going to run it in batches so I'm going to drill a load of holes and then I'm going to run another cycle that is drilling more holes, boring and tapping some. And then I'll do a final cycle, which is tapping the final ones and doing the chamfer. So I've just got the 10.2 the in at the moment. And then I've got lined up, I've got uh, 12 by 1.75, 10 by 1.25 and 8.5, which will tap for that. And all the chamfer and stuff is already in it. So uh, I'll run that and I'll show you some holes. A lot of milling at the moment. I'm sorry, there's a lot of milling, isn't there? Um, that's what progress looks like. Now, yeah, while well, I've got you watching uh, watching this drill, it looks good, doesn't it? Doing this little step drill thing. Why don't you just uh, press like? You could subscribe and drop a comment, say hello, say how much you're looking forward to not seeing CNC videos for a while. Um, that'd be nice. Nice, nice to get a bit of response. It's been good for the last few videos. So, well, apart from the last one, that was. But, um, the ones before, mega. Right, talk to you there. looking good isn't it it's come out really well I think tapping is I know it's basic but isn't that one of the coolest things on CNC it's when you're by hand you're just you're going forwards and backwards aren't you and you're prattling around on these it's done love it proper oh jeez I lost out on a compressor on a auction and I don't know now it's back to this life it was turned up. Lovely stuff. Collected it just before the bank holiday. The good news is it's actually a, a setter piece, which means a couple of the tolerances are slightly out. Actually, um, this one here, which interfaces with this, is actually six microns over, but it's okay um, for the tolerances over the whole system rather than... Should we zoom out a bit? For the tolerances over the whole system rather than just it doesn't basically it's fine that i can do this to a h7k6 and it, it, this will still be it'll be tight going in but i know the other ones will be all good i also struggle to measure six microns so we're all we're all right really i've used this and done a load of cycles to get this control bore right which is this one and it's all good um I put this in, I could barely get it out. So that's ideal. You can see a slight trace mark around there, maybe. Depend on how much you've had to drink this evening. Um, that is this line here. So I do need to um, take this other bore out um, down quite a lot more. So it's just, uh, so I'm, I'm not hurting this, but this isn't interfering. And then Cephini, it's done. Maybe I need a method for pulling these out as well. <laughs> nope, panic over. It's <laughs> it's just a two-handed job. Uh, really good fit. That's great. Cleared the bits. It, it sits flat on there. Oh, what a job. That's good. That is that is a uh, 
perfect. There'll be no run out on those at all, especially compared to the, you know, dodgy wheels you're gonna be slapping on there in a, in a hurry. Final piece of the puzzle. We've got to stop it now, haven't we? I mean, I can't believe, I can't believe anyone's still watching this. Right, uh, there you go. It's got to be those bits. And there's your clamping job on top. I'm gonna to do these, I'll put that into the model and then it shouldn't, shouldn't interfere with it. We're ready for up one. I would get on with this, um, but uh, <laughs> but I need to make some hub adapters for, uh, yeah, I know, machining hubs. I need to essentially make these, but for the other side, so this can go on a hub dyno, uh, because we're about to put a, a historic touring car on a hub dyno, and <laughs> the, uh, the hub adapters that did exist have been made into something smaller, so... Uh, so there we go, um, I'll do that now. So all this will come out. And uh, I've, I've got a load of other stuff that's arrived, so I promise I won't do any CNCing in the next video.